God. Please look over my husband, George. George is a good boy. You know that. My son has always gone out of his way to give others a hand. Now it's him who needs help. Help my big brother, George. He's done so much for all of us, more for me than I remember. I remember all the times he would stay out late after work and not ask a cent. The world needs more like George Bailey. George Bailey never thinks about himself. I wouldn't have a roof over my head if it wasn't for him. If it wasn't for him, I would have given up long ago. All I think about is myself. I must have taken the last set he had. He had no sense of business, that George Bailey, just like his father. None of the Baileys were ever businessmen. It's his own fault he wasn't prepared for time. At times like these, I can't help but think it's all my fault. Help him, Father. It's me who's been putting him all through all this. Something's the matter with Daddy. Should we pray for him, Mommy? Yes, Suzu. Pray. Pray very hard. You sent for me, sir? Yes, Clarence. A man down on Earth needs our help. Splendid. I is he sick? No, worse. He's discouraged. At exactly 10.45 p.m. tonight, Earth time, that man will be thinking seriously of throwing away God's greatest gift. Oh dear, dear, his life! Then I have only an hour to dress. What are they wearing now? You will spend that hour getting acquainted with George Bailey. Sir, if I should accomplish this mission, I mean, might I perhaps win my wings? I've been waiting for over 200 years now, and people are beginning to talk. What's that book you've got there? The, the Adventures of Tom Sawyer, sir. I was reading it when he sent for me. Oh, fine book. Excellent. Well, you do a good job with George Bailey, and we'll see about your wings. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if you're going to help George, you'll want to know a little something about him. Look, see the town? Why, yes. A group of young boys sitting down a snow-covered hill and onto the ice. This is amazing. Yippee! Who's that? That's your problem. George Bailey. A boy? That's him when he was 12 back in 1919. Something happens here you'll have to remember later on. And here comes the scare baby, my kid brother, Harry Bailey. I'm not scared. Come on, Harry. Atta boy, Harry. Yippee! Help! Help! Oh dear, Harry's falling through the ice. I'm coming, Harry. Make a chain, gang. A chain! So his brother fell through the ice, but George saved him. Yes, Clarence. And ever since, George is in a bad ear. All that icy water, you understand. Bad ear. Yes, sir. The other event came a few months later. George took an after-school job at Old Man Gower's drugstore. It's me, Mr. Gower, George Bailey. You're late. Yes, sir. Hello, George. Hello, Mary. Hello, Violet. Two cents worth of shoelaces, Violet? Mary was here first. I'm still thinking. Shoelaces? Please, Georgie. I like him. But you like every boy. What's wrong with that? Here you are. Bye, Georgie. See you later, Mary. Made up your mind yet, Mary? I'll take chocolate. With coconuts? Well, I don't like coconuts. You don't like coconuts? Say, brainless. Don't you know where coconuts come from? Look at here. From Tahiti, Fiji Islands, the Coral Sea. No, what's that you got there? A new magazine. I never saw it before. Of course you never. Only us explorers can get it. And I've been nominated for membership in the National Geographic Society. Let me get your ice cream. Is this the ear you can't hear on? George Bailey, I'll love you till the day I die. I'm going out exploring someday, you watch. And I'm gonna have a couple of harems and, and maybe three or four wives. Wait and see. George, George! Yes, sir? You're not paid to be a canary. Yes, sir. Goodbye, George. Goodbye, Mary. What was that piece of paper George just picked up? It's a telegram from Mr. Gower. He found out this morning that his son died of influenza. Oh, awful. Yes, and he spent the afternoon drowning his grief in whiskey. Mr. Gower, do you want something? Anything? No. Anything I can do back here? No. I'll, I'll get them, sir. What What's this bottle, Mr. Gower? Never mind that. Take the capsules over to Mrs. Blaine's. Yes, sir. They have the theory there, haven't they, sir? Oh. Uh, Is it a charge, sir? Uh, yeah, yeah, charge. Mr. Gower, I think... Oh, get going! Y yes, sir. Mr. Gower? What is it? Mr. Gower, you that bottle you used, you put something wrong in those capsules. Who do you think you're talking to? You're hurting my sore ear! You hear what I said? Get out of here! 
<laughs> Mr. Gower, you don't know what you're doing. You put something wrong in those capsules. I know you're unhappy. You got that telegram and you're upset. It wasn't your fault, Mr. Gower, but look, Mr. Gower, look, look. This bottle you use, this bottle to make up the capsules, it's poison. Poison? Don't hit my sore ear again. Poison? Oh, George, George. All I wanted was to make sure, Mr. Gower. I won't tell anyone. I know what you're feeling. I won't ever tell a soul. Hope to die, I won't. Oh, George. Did he ever tell anyone about those pills? Not a soul. Did he ever marry the girl? Did he ever go exploring? We'll get there soon enough, Clarence. When George Bailey grew up, he wanted to go to college, but there just wasn't the money. So he worked four years in the Building and Loan Association. Building and Loan Association. George's father was in the Building and Loan business, along with George's uncle, Billy. George, uh, what's the combination to the safe? We wrote it down so you wouldn't forget it. Uh, that's right. Where? Your wallet, Uncle Billy. Thanks. Lovable fellow. Just forgetful is all. Who's that? That's Henrietta F. Potter, the richest and meanest woman in the county. Peter, Potter's here. Mr. Bailey, Mr. Bailey, Mr. Bailey. There is nothing quite so loathsome as a family business. Now, Peter, you know what I'm here for. I'm on a very tight schedule. A family to evict at three. Okay, then, M Mrs. Potter. Here's the thing. I just need a little bit more time. Just 30 short days. I'll dig up that 5000 somehow. Have you put any real pressure on those people of yours to pay their mortgages? Times are hard, Miss Potter. A lot of people are out of work. Then foreclose. I can't do that. These families have children. They're not my children. But they're somebody's children, Miss Potter. Are you running a business or a charity ward? Well, all not right. Not my money. Miss Potter, what makes you such a hard scold character? You have no family, no children. You can't even begin to spend all the money you've got. So I suppose I should give it to some miserable failures like you and that idiot brother of yours to spend for me. He's not a failure. You can't say that about my father. George, George. You're not. You're the biggest man in town. All right, son. Thanks. I'll talk to you tonight. Don't let her say that about you, Pop. Tonight. What kind of business are you running here? Good God, man. George worked for his father, saving enough to see him through the university. That summer, though, he was going to Europe. George got a job on a cattle boat and was ready to do a little traveling before college. Old man Gower surprised him with a great, a gift of a great big suitcase. On his way home from the store, he ran into his friends, Ernie the cab driver and Bert the cop. Hey, Ernie. Hi, George. Hi, Bert. Hey, George. What's the suitcase for? I'm a rich tourist today. Hey, how about driving me home in style? Sure, your highness. Hop in the cab. And for the carriage tray, I'll put some on my hat. Good afternoon, Mr. Bailey. Looks like you're ready to get out of here. Hello, Violet. Hey, you look good. Not some dress you got on there. Oh, this old thing? Well, I only wear it when I don't care how I look. See you later. How would you like? Yes. Want to come along, Bert? Be the town. No thanks. Think I'll go home and see what the wife's doing. Family, okay. man. George saved up money to go away to college. His bags were packed and he was all set to go. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, it's hard to realize it's the last night in the Bailey boarding house. We're sure gonna miss you, George. I'm gonna miss you too, Pop. Hey, what's the matter? You look tired. Oh, another tussle with old Henrietta Potter today, that's all. <sighs> I thought when we put her on the board of directors, she's up on us. I wonder what's eating that old money grubbing buzzard anyways. Oh, she's a sick woman. Frustrated and sick. Sick in her mind, sick in her soul, if she even has one. Hates everybody that has anything to do that she can't have. Hates us mostly, I guess. Hey, George, can I borrow your tuxedo studs? Yeah, help yourself, Harry. Well, where are they? In your suitcase? I'm not taking a tuxedo on a cattle boat, you know. Say, where'd you get that fine piece of luggage anyway? Ah, uh, Mr. Gower, a going away present. And one of these days, you're going to see that bag all covered with travel labels, Italy, Baghdad. Hey, why don't you come to the dance tonight? What, and be bored to death? Well, you couldn't want a better death. Lots of pretty girls. Hey, hey, I've got to hurry. I wish we could send Henry to college with you, George. We have that all figured out, you see. Harry's going to take my job at the building and loan, work there four years, and then he go. he'll go. He's pretty young for that job. Well, no younger than I was. You're born, born older, George. I suppose you've decided what you're going to do when you get out of college? 
Oh, well, you know, what I've always talked about. Building things, design new buildings, plan modern cities. Still after that first million before you're 30? No, I'll settle for half that in cash. Of course. It's just a hope, but you wouldn't consider coming back to the building and loan now, would you? I know it's too early to talk about it. Oh, I couldn't face being cooped up for the rest of my life in that shabby little office. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Pop. I didn't mean that remark. But this business of nickels and dimes and spending all your life trying to figure out how to save three cents of a length of a pipe, I'd go crazy. I guess I just want to do something big and something important. You know, George, I feel that in a small way we are doing something important, satisfying a fundamental urge. It's not too much for a man to want his own roof, walls, and a fireplace, and we're helping him get those things in our shabby little office. I know, Dad. I, I wish I felt... But I've been hoarding pennies like a miser in order to... Well, most of my friends have already finished college. I just feel like if I don't get, get away, I'm going to go crazy. Yes, yes, you're right, boy. This town's no place to live if you aren't willing to crawl back to Potter. You go get yourself an education, then get on out of here. I'm glad you see what I'm talking about. Say, I think I'm going to go down on Old Main Street, last night in town and all. Have a good time, son. Who's that? Why, that's Violet Bick. The little girl from the candy counter? That's right. Hello, Georgie Porgy. Hello, Vi. What gifts? Nothing. Where are you going? Oh, I'll probably end up at the library. Georgie, don't you ever get tired of just reading about things? Yeah, well, what are you doing tonight? Not a thing. Are you game, Vi? What do you say we make a night of it? Oh, I'd love it, Georgie. What'll we do? Let's go out in the fields and take off our shoes and walk in the grass. Huh? Then we can go up to Seward Lake. It's beautiful up there in the moonlight and we can swim. Then we can climb out Bedford and smell the pines and watch the sunrise against the peaks. And we'll stay up there the whole night and everybody's going to be talking. And there's going to be a terrific scandal. George, have you gone crazy? Walk in the grass in my bare feet whites 10 miles up there to Mount Bedford. You think just because you... Ugh. Okay, just forget about the whole thing. Forget about what, George? Oh, nothing, Sam. You remember Mary, don't you? Hi, George. Hi, Mary. <laughs> Say, you wouldn't mind walking Mary home, would you, George? Of course not. Is that okay with you, Mary? Fine by me. Great, thanks. So, George walked Mary home. Is that important, Joseph? I'd say it is, because even though Mary lived only four blocks away, it took them two hours to get there. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight. Come out tonight. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon? Hot dog. Oh boy, just like an organ. Gee whiz. Beautiful. You know something? If it wasn't me talking, I'd say you were the prettiest girl in town. Well, why don't you say it? I don't know. Maybe I will. Hey, how old are you anyway? Eighteen. Eighteen? What? Too young or too old? Oh, no. Just right. Your age fits you. Hey, look where we are. Oh, the old Granville house. Yeah, I gotta throw a rock. Oh, no, don't. I love that old house. Well, no. Don't you know about deserted houses? You make a wish and then throw a rock. But, George, it's such a lovely old place. I wish I lived there. In there? I wouldn't live there if I was a ghost. Now watch. Watch this. How about it, huh? Pretty good shot, huh? Broke a window, huh? What's your wish, George? Well, not just one wish. A whole hatful, Mary. I'm shaking the dust of this crummy little town off my feet, and I'm going to go see the world. Italy, Greece, the Parthenon, the Colosseum. Then I'm going to come back here and go to college and see what they know. Then I'm going to build things. I'm going to build airfields. I'm going to build skyscrapers a hundred stories high. I'm going to build up bridges a mile long, and then I'm going to... Hey, hey, what? Aren't you going to throw a rock, too? Hey, that's pretty good. What'd you wish for, Mary? Oh, no. If I tell you, it may not come true. Hey, hey, Mary, come on. What do you want, huh? Do you want the moon? All you gotta do is say the word now. Okay, the moon. I'll take it. And then what? Then what? I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Then you could swallow it and it all dissolve. see? The moonbeams shoot at your fingers and toes and the ends of your hair and the... Hey, am I talking too much? Yes. Who's that? Old Lady Collins on her front porch. 
Why don't you shut up and kiss the girl? Uh, youth is wasted on the wrong people. Hey, 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 hold on. Hey, lady, come back out here and I'll show you some kissing. I'll put some hair back on your head. George, you George. Uh, Uncle Billy? George, get in the car quick. Your father's had a stroke. Um, I'm sorry, Mary, I've got to go. This George's is father died father. that night, parents. So, of course, George couldn't go to Europe. But that fall, just as he was ready to leave for college, the directors of the building alone held a meeting. They were going to appoint a successor.